Hey there, friends in the music community. Mega Jeff back. It's been a rough week. Um, I feel like it's been forever since I did a video, even though I know it's only been about a week. But um, this past weekend, I had to speak at a conference. So for the past month, I've just been spending all the time I could trying to keep up with the extra work and being prepared for the conference. Anyway, it's past now. Um, it turns out it came out pretty good, so I'm glad. And it's all done. So I don't want to catch up because I've gotten a um, good amount of stuff in in the past couple weeks. Um, the last video I did was kind of a feature video about one album I got in and then a bunch of stuff from that band, uh, Cell Dweller, Circle of Dust. Um, I guess not as many people know about them. The video, I guess, was kind of a failure. <laughs> Very few views. Uh, I guess nobody was interested in a band that they really didn't know anything about. So anyway, going back to the regular routine stuff today, and this is all new stuff that I've picked up in the past week or two or so, or has come in the mail in some shape or fashion. Anyway, knock out a couple new, um, these are going to be Christian bands, which everybody knows I have a bunch of those, and um, these are some of the new Christian releases I got. This first one is one that's been out for a couple years, but I... Well, it's the XT album, Saved by the Blood. Now, um, XT, uh, Bjorn Stixon from uh, Leviticus, which is a band that is probably, has been mentioned uh, in the VC a bit. Um, after Leviticus broke, he formed XT. They put out one album, which was real commercial keyboard-oriented uh, melodic pop rock, and then they put two more out that were mainly just imports, and they were uh, each one was a little progressively more hard and they disappeared basically um, and now they're back with this album it's um, it's it's good it's 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 not the real melodic stuff but it's also not as heavy as they have been it's a good middle of the road plotting ahead uh, hard rock venture so like I say it came out a couple years ago um, I have a copy of it digitally been wanting to get it on vinyl it's still hanging around because it's an import it hangs around in the $30 range and it's just been you know not high on my hit list ran across a copy on Amazon the other day for $10 I think with shipping it was like $12 $13 um, and it was supposed you know and it it was brand new anyway so I'm glad I have it it's great um, nice cardboard thick you know it's in set sleeve with pictures can't say the pictures are you know I mean they're neatly done but I mean they really do make the guys look old just because of the way they've done the contrast on the pictures um, I like it though great album they've got a brand new album coming out now I've heard one song from it which is actually a cover a re-recorded cover of one of their songs from one of their previous albums I don't know if the new album's gonna have a lot of those but the one or two songs they get out there um, are sounding good so they got a new one coming hasn't been re mentioned this going to be on vinyl i know uh they're looking into it but the cd is it's either out or it's coming out and then i got the uh got a, a package of the new releases that came out last week from retroactive the uh detritus or detritus if what is it called if but for one yeah if but for one Got a different cover than it used to. Um, of course, you know, it's been redone and everything. It's just on regular black vinyl. Got an inset there, insert there. Um, sounds great, sounds great. I had this CD of this back in the day um, and it is great now to have it on vinyl. Thank you, Retroactive. Anyway, with that, I got also bought the, um, well, this is the, uh, the, the same album on CD. Um, I didn't open it yet. I already had the digital version downloaded uh, so I did pick up that combo with their first album which they're promising is gonna be out on vinyl eventually too honestly I kind of like this album better than the second so I really hope that it does see the uh, light of day and then this one has some demo tracks and stuff so it's got six extra songs so I'm glad to get these with those came a pen a nice square pen uh, with the artwork from the first album and then a round pen with the logo Gotta say, I almost didn't, almost didn't see these. They came, the vinyl, CDs were on top, and then there was some paper in there to kind of keep it, keep the CDs from shifting around too much. And I took out the CDs, and I took out the vinyl, and I threw the box to the side. 
And then um, saw somebody else show, um, hey, I received mine in the mail. And they showed the vinyl and everything. And then they said, and they showed the button. I'm like, um, I didn't get a button. Or did I? Dun, dun, dun. Went back, found the box, went through it, found that piece of the paper that was cobbled up in there, the padding. Thought it was just padding, felt it, and turns out buttons were in there. And I didn't notice it. So check your packaging. Make sure uh, there's no little fun things in there that you missed. Um, also, at the same time released, got the new Deliverance album. Uh, really interesting, cool uh, cover. Anyway, hear what I say. Uh, it's on black vinyl too. The end set's way different, it's smaller. Got the lyrics on one side and it looks kind of like a concert poster on the other. Great stuff, I threw this on. And even though I had the CD, you know, I, I don't know this, it sounds great. I am glad to have, a, I guess what would be considered an official copy. I have the CD, but the CD is actually says promotional copy, promotional copy, property of Three Frogs Records and Rocks Records. This was sent to me to review for Heaven's Metal Magazine, so it's different. It's got that all over it. There's, the card just has the words on it. There's no booklet or anything, you know. I don't know if the original CD was read or whatever, but it's a little different, so nice to have, you know, an official regular release. And then I got this. This was just, I bought this from uh, from Boone's Overstock. It was in the used vinyl things, and that's David and the Giants under control. Way back, a couple months back, I showed a videos where, I mean, where I found a couple of Dave and the Giant albums at a thrift store, and I said, these are two albums that are, are, are pretty good, but they're not the album that I really knew, excuse me, that I really knew well, or that I really wanted. That was this one. Paid a few extra bucks for it than, uh, you know, would have been thrift store prices, but uh, this was the one around the time, this was in the 80, 85. So it was around that time when I had made I told this in my videos a while back, made that life decision to get rid of all my um, mainstream secular type music and just turn to playing just Christmas Christian music. I basically got rid of all my non-Christian music and kept a Striper or two album and you know started building up from there. This album had come out around that time. I didn't have it, my roommate did. Um, my roommate was more into the poppier stuff. This is not so much poppy, it's rock, but um, it's you know commercial rock. Um, Dave and the Giants are from the Mississippi area down on the Gulf Coast. I was stationed down on the Gulf Coast at the time. So these guys would pop up in concerts at this church or that church. I saw them in Louisiana at one church. I saw them in Mississippi at another church. Um, I know I saw them at least twice. I'm thinking I might have seen them more. But this was the album that we saw the tours for. These were the songs that my roommate played the most. These were the songs I was most familiar with. So I was really glad to finally get a copy of this. Um, the and this again I told in previous videos this uh, if you're older old enough to remember old enough like I was uh, like I am to remember the I Love Lucy show back black and white I only saw reruns I'm not old enough to watch it when it was really on I saw the reruns when I was a kid um, their son little Richie used to be come out and play drums he's basically like this little five six year old kid who would come out there and bang on his drums during the show occasionally. Anyway, that's who, this is that's Keith Thibodeau. He uh, went on to he's still a drummer and he played for David and the Giants. He may still if they're still around. So now I have three of their albums. This one, the one before this, I want to say the two before this, and um, they're really good. One of them the other day, uh, I don't know the day, a couple months ago, um, on Facebook, somebody was like, I really want to get a copy of David and the Giants, Riders in the Storm, Rider. I don't want to sound like the Doors now. Anyway, one of their other albums, and I thought, well, I got a copy. You know, I'm not, I'm not so attached to it because I bought it in the thrift store. I'll give it, sell it away. Um, so I pulled it out just to check it, make sure it sounded okay. Threw it on, gave it a spin, and then said, oh, I don't want to sell this. I really like this. Um, it was some good stuff. Anyway, so that's all there. Now, next up, this was another one of those uh, random finds on Amazon. Um, it was on my wish list. And all of a sudden, boom, dropped to ten dollars, and it was said it was had some mild cosmetic damage, and it wasn't in the original plastic. And I thought, I don't care, ten dollars. Peter Chris solo album picture disc was reissued um, 2006. Turns out this is the uh, when I looked it up on Discogs to try to catalog it. I think this is the 
Germany reissue, not the English one, not the American one for Germany. And yeah, I mean it's not in the it's not in its shrink, but there is no cosmetic damage to it. And it's in a nice thick sleeve, which looks like it probably would have been that way since it was an import. I mean it's new, I don't know. I don't know why they were selling it for ten dollars. It's an import. Cost me like twelve or thirteen. Alright, so KISS. First band I ever listened okay. First rock band I ever got into. 1976 or 77 is when I discovered them when I was not quite a teen. So, one of my favorite bands of all times for the longest time, even to this day. Yes, I plan on seeing them hopefully in August for this last tour, if it's really their last tour. I don't care if they lip sync. Anyway, um, where do I stand on the solo albums? This is the only one I've got on vinyl, but of course I got them all on CD. Uh, everybody likes to rank the solo albums and have fun, you know, hopefully have fun with it. Here's my ranking of the solo albums. I would agree with the majority of people that my number one solo album is the Ace Frehley solo album. Highest ranking one. Um, surprisingly though, this is my number two. This is my number two favorite. Um, Gene Simmons is my number three. Paul Stanley is my number four. Now, reason being, Ace Frehley is no, no, it's the best album. There's just nothing, no quarrel about that. Um, Paul Stanley album sounds like Kiss. It just sounds like a commercialized Kiss. There was really no, I mean, it just sounded like Kiss. It was good, it was, you know, it was decent. It just didn't, and I know all the songs, I love all the songs, but it, it, it didn't rank up there as something I listened to a lot. Gene Simmons, very quirky, had a lot of diversity, has some really good songs. Back when the albums first came out, that was the one I listened to quite a bit. It was just interesting, quirky, you know, uh, and I still like a lot of their songs, but it's not, you know, you listen to it and it's good, but it's not something I listen to a lot because it's so all over the place. It just doesn't uh, attract my attention as much as Peter Chris was different. It was definitely, you know, it was way different musically than the rest of them. But, and it's not because I'm a drummer that I like that album, but it was different. It was unkiss like. Um, you know, he comes from a big jazzy type background. So there was a lot of diversity on there, but the songs were great. A lot of them were, some of them were covers, but I back in the day listen to that album all the time and it just stuck with me i thought that was great and so the two the two albums by of the kiss solo albums that i listen to the most to this day are ace fairly first peter chris second the other two i can't tell you when the last time i listened to them those two i can tell you i listen to them at least once a year they're they're in regular rotation all these years anyway enough on that so next up um on Facebook a couple weeks ago, had uh, the Super Metal Sunday. Um, I mentioned uh, I didn't grab a lot of stuff because the prices can get a little crazy. I'm I'm having to cut back a lot now um, on the vinyl and stuff. It's just I need to keep things under ten dollars a lot of times. Um, so when you're looking at that, some of the cool stuff on Super Metal Sunday and people are asking 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and up, and up, I couldn't play. I could play when it was under ten dollars. And I picked up some things. Now I did mention um, in a previous video that I picked up the Skull by Trouble. I did pay $20 for that. That was the most expensive. These are the other things that I got. Um, this is a band I never had heard of. There are a lot of bands in the mid to late 80s where after I had thrown all my records away and just started listening to Christian music, a lot of those bands that I um, that kind of passed up on didn't know much about. If they weren't big on MTV and they weren't big after that, um, I probably didn't know about them. This is one of them, Silent Rage, had no idea who these guys were. Saw them, saw the picture on the front, um, was only, you know, it was under $10, and so I went to YouTube real quick, pulled up, pulled up their video, and loved it. I said, okay, that's the kind of band I want to get, hair metal. They're not really heavier side of that, they're the more melodic side of that, but it was great. Um, then I went on Discogs and saw they had a second album, has a big muscular guy on there. Um, and I believe I have to look into it, but um, if I'm not mistaken, that one was on like Simmons Records. So uh, I am assuming Gene Simmons has something to do with them later. Um, but I grabbed this one, and I like it. I, I gave it a spin. I like it. You know, this is the kind of music I like. Um, not the same guy. Okay, this was a different guy. Jack Star out of the darkness. Um, I'm a big Rhett Forrester fan of uh, from riot and he did this album with jack star jack star was from virgin steel another band back in the 80s who still to this day exists 
uh, but not with him. But uh, the band has gone on. They have released albums up until last year. Um, so they're still around. But uh, so this was kind of like a solo album. He's gone on to do a lot of solo albums under um, Jack Stars. There's different, you know, he has different band names. Um, but anyway, this was like one of the first solo album type things. And he had pulled in Rhett Forster from Riot to Sing. Um, Carl Kennedy from The Rods played drums. If you remember a couple weeks ago in the video I did, I mentioned Carl. Uh, whenever I saw his name, I knew he was a New York musician from The Rods. And he was on that EXE album. Anyway, I just think this is a really good solid hard rock record great guitar work great vocals so it was only you know a handful of dollars and i thought i want to get it it was a cutout but it was in um great condition and it still got it's got the hype sticker right on it i'm assuming maybe it was a promo great condition picked up a copy of the wild dogs reign of terror again the price was right this one was actually in the shrink wrap i have opened it and bagged it had a uh cut on there um, Big Dean Castronova fan and he started off in this band um, some of the songs on this album were written by him but he's not on this album this was their third album I think um, he played on at least the first one maybe the second one but anyway um, I don't have any of their stuff on vinyl um, I have all their stuff digitally in some form or another um, so when I saw this and it's got the hype sticker and it's still in the shrink and it was only a cutout and it was under ten dollars I thought yeah it's on the Enigma label um, and then the same guy had the uh, Rhett Forster solo album, Rhett Forster, um, from Quiet Riot. After I mean Quiet Riot, you're right. From Riot, um, after he left, he did a couple solo albums. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a solid record. He, I mean, solid solid set of music. He did a couple solo albums, and this was one of them. And Gone with the Wind, really nice. Talks about X Riot. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's so it's got this music sticker on here that's holding on the hype sticker. It was also still in the shrink wrap, still sealed. Um, it is a cutout, still sealed, unopened. I went ahead and opened. I gave it a spin. It's really good. Thrash with class. It's not a thrash album, so I'm not really sure what this is. I don't think there's a song called that. No. Thrash with class lyrics included. There are no lyrics in here. It's just a plastic bag. So I don't. I'm bad. I don't know if that hype. The hype sticker's kind of fallen off, and it's held on by this sticker. Whether it actually belonged on this album or not, I'm not sure. It doesn't make sense. I don't know what thrash with class or lyrics included means when there's no lyrics. Anyway, the last item I'm going to show. I would loosely call this a grail. I know grails tend to be like really sought after, high-end, really great stuff. Ah, excuse me, I had to get a drink. This is my this is a grail for me only because it was a low low limited release that came out like 10 years before I ever got back into vinyl. So to me, it's like I'll probably never see one of those for a decent price. So that made it a grail for me. I want one. It's limited. I'll probably never get one but it is going to be one of those campy type things that I wanted as everybody knows who's watched any of my past videos back in the day I did a whole video on Thor Thor is one of those cheesy uh, cheesy campy campy musicians that had a lot of strange stuff and some decent stuff and I've collected almost everything I get my hands on I've always wanted to get a copy of Thor's mute if I'm not mistaken this came out in like 2006 I want to say I have to go back and look. Um, it is a com it's almost like a compilation. It is it's a compilation of stuff from back when he was Thor and the Imps and, and other things. We're going back into the 70s, 73 and on. And this, so it's listed as Thor Mutant 1973 to 2003. And this is the musical act that he had Thor and the Imps and other things. But I mean, look at this. Look at these scantily clad men and ladies in sparkly stuff. Um, it's different. You can go online, go on YouTube and look up Thor. 
and dig around. You'll see him on like the uh, one of those talk shows back in the day. He had blonde hair then, but so here he is with darker hair. But back in this day, it was all kind of like a an act, and you know, um, I don't know. It's just it's a '70s looking thing. Anyway, I love to have this stuff though because it's cool. And then they've got all kinds of pictures. You know, they had all kinds of just flashy stuff. The way that they dressed and had the show. This was before he became Thor the Metal Avenger. But it's cool. It's a, you know, it is, it's a gay fold, but it's only a single record there. And it's just got a bunch of best of and explanations about the songs and stuff. And this was on Outlaw Recordings 2003. Um, 300, okay, so this one is on purple vinyl. I'm really loving colored vinyl. And like I say, it is on it's on Outlaw Recordings. There were only 300 copies. They're numbered. And this is number 266 of 300. So, getting near the tail end there. Um, and as you can see, it's priced at $30. I think I paid a little more shipping. Um, so, I didn't think that was too untouchable. I, it was an impulse buy. I probably shouldn't have. But I figured this is one of those ones I'm probably never going to see again just happened to pop up on Discog, so I grabbed it. It was also released on Black Vinyl, which seemed to be more limited, 200 copies of that. And that one, there is a copy on Discogs, but it's like $50. I had previously bought this, same exact uh, case for Mutant, but this is the Anthology CD edition. So it says right there, there is no LP inside, only a CD. So I guess they had more covers than they had actual vinyl for it. So they put the CD in this. So you get the same cool packaging with the pictures and everything, and it's a gatefold. Same exact cover. Stick a CD in there, which I think was probably even just a glorified CDR. Release it as 500 and add six extra tracks, and then you end up with a 16 track, uh, what they, I guess, are calling the anthology of. Yeah, it goes from 73 to 2005. So lots of good stuff. So this is the version I had before, and uh, so now I have the actual vinyl. Um, this was released 500 and I've got number 126 of 500 and this one I did buy back in probably not too long after it was released all right last up I want to go through another package I got today so this is going to appeal more to uh, the Christian rock crowd again too um, rocks records retroactive records as these guys are releasing stuff you always see them releasing you know the first hundred copies get a sticker or all of them come with stickers so you get all these stickers, Christovox, Christovox, I mean the late, you know, uh, Exalt, the late, the ones that just recently came out, you know, the Holy Soldiers and the Love Lives and the Holy Soldiers and the previous Holy Soldiers. So there's a bunch of these, just all kinds of these stickers. Um, and I've been collecting them, and, but occasionally you miss out on one, either they run out or maybe you don't order the package deal that comes with it. Um, a lot of them come with posters and sometimes you they run out or you, again you don't get the combination that you need to get with the poster. Um, so there was a couple things I was missing. I was reaching out and so I was talking to our good friend Scott Waters. Any chance you could scrounge around and see I'm missing this, this, and this. And he said, let me see what I can get. And he grabbed a bunch of stuff and put together a package for me. Um, and I got that in the mail today. Um, right on the top of it here, we got some of these inner rings that came from the vinyls from the Puppet of Destruction. Signed, he signed it there, Scott. And it's got, you know, the rings there. I have the actual, yeah, I have the, the vinyl on those. So that, that's cool. Um, I'm not going to show everything here because he really just kind of put together a, a package of a lot of stuff. But this was the one that I wanted was the Sacrament Testimony of Apocalypse. Because in one of my previous videos in the past two weeks or so, I had finally got my hands on the second Sacrament vinyl. And it had the poster with it. But the first album that I had that I bought on eBay, it was like a scratch and dent, um, did not have it. So he scored me one of these. So now I have both. But then he threw in some of the other posters. Some of these I do already have, like the Snake Eyes, a Bride. And again, I'm not going to show them all because, you know, Haven. And it's a lot of the ones. I don't know if he sent all of them. I looked them earlier, but it's a lot of the ones um, that have been released. And, you know, Haven. And I have a good majority, but he was just like, well, here's some, you know. 
So I may go through them one day and do another video. Um, this was cool, Ultimatum. I have the vinyl of this, but this is one of those posters you can put concert information on there. Um, so, a bunch of these. Then I was asking about some of the, uh, because I bought the combination uh, recently of the two holy, the, the holy soldier and love life. Um, I guess some of those packages went out and didn't have, they had a handful of some of the photos with them. Um, and I saw some people posting on Facebook that, you know, I got my albums today and then they showed the photo and I didn't get one and I mentioned it and he was able to, you know, dig up one. They only had a small amount. It was an afterthought. They threw them in to some of the orders, but somehow not all the pre-orders got one. Um, so I was glad to get that. I have, and I pulled it out. I have a bunch of different folders like this where I have collected band photos like that. And these these are all mostly, most all of these are Christian bands. Um, Saint Asylum, just odd bands, Seven Signs, Shout, you know, things like that. So I have a ton of these. Hot Pink Turtle, Mass, Betrayal, Vengeance, Light Force, that's the Light Force uh, Mystical Thieves album um, promo shot that they came out with. Uh, Betrayal, Awesome Thrash Band, Recon, couple of Recon. And these are all from back in the day. Sardonyx, Whiteheart, Novella, Apostle, Baron Cross, Jet Circus. This is a band I really like and nobody's ever really heard of me. I have like one, one tape out and I really like it. Guardian, both the old days and the new days. Deliverance, Deliverance. So anyway, I collect Saint. I have a bunch of these. So it's nice to be able to pick up Things like the Holy Soldier. He also threw me in this one, which uh, I don't know. Some band I've never heard of. Ultimatum. Ha. Huh. Anyway, yeah, Ultimatum. There's Scott there. I don't know why he didn't sign this. Come on, Scott. Why didn't you sign this? Anyway, that would have been great. Um, Haven. I think some of these came out with the vinyl releases, but I was, I think I was late on the game buying those, and I might have missed that on some of these. I think I have this one. Eraser Head. I think I showed that in my one of my early videos. Um, again, he just had some random ones laying around. He threw them in. Seven Sign, I'm pretty sure I didn't have this because I just got these vinyl uh, editions two months, three months ago. That was late in the game. Consecrator, I think I might have had because I did buy that when it came out. Um, and then I got a couple cool No Life Tool metal. That's a card. It's a sticker. That was cool. And then... He was able to dig around and just grab me some more of the stickers. And again, I need to go through them and see which ones I already have and which ones I don't have. He just kind of grabbed a handful of them. But I know there are some in here to fill in my square, my uh, missing pieces. I bought this when it first came out. I didn't even know there was a sticker, but Mad at the World, I love them. Um, Peacekeeper, great album. I bought it digitally, so I don't have a sticker. I do have that one. Didn't have that one because um, I have the digital download of that too. Jerusalem, I love Jerusalem. I never did get around to buying the remasters because they sent me the digital tracks to, uh, because of the magazine and stuff. But um, I didn't even know there were stickers with that. So there were a couple of those in here. I already have Exalt. Didn't know there was a Guardian sticker. Got two of those. Another oh, no, Peacemaker. Already had the Crystal Vox. Pretty sure I got that one. Almost sure. I do have that one because I already had that. The Haven ones, I think I have. I never got around to buying this vinyl. I understand he's only got a few copies left. I would like to get it. I've been listening to it quite a bit on um, Spotify, but there's so many other things I need to get that I, this one hasn't jumped to the top of the list, Jerusalem. Um, this is a new album, I wanna get this. I haven't bought that yet. And this I had a digital download of, so I didn't even know there was one of those. I'm pretty sure I got that. Anyway, so it's the same thing. You know, Bride, Christovac. So he's doing great, great, great stuff. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you. Um, and for the record labels for providing those materials. It's just kind of cool to have a little extra. Um, I do all I can to sponsor everything retroactive and, and rocks and all of them put out because, you know, they're putting out a lot of stuff that's great and I'm hoping that they do well so that they can put out more great stuff. They're bringing back pressings of things that haven't seen the light of day in years and or have never been released on vinyl. So um, I'm really appreciative and so I try to do all I can to buy it. It's hard to keep up. They're putting out so much great stuff that I want to get that it's the pocketbook certain, especially when you start dealing with anything else on the you know outside of them that you want to buy. It just makes it tough, but I'm not going to complain. 
Um, some things I can't buy immediately when they come out and you miss out on some of these and sometimes it's you know it's nice to have friends who may have an extra copy or two. Anyway, that's all. This is longer than I really want to go. That's what's new. I got plans for a new video, hopefully later this week. Now that I'm catching up from after the conference, um, I want to do some things that I've seen some other people do, um, some top 10 type stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great night. Later.